Welcome back. I'm your host, Darren Green, and this is The Darren Green Show. How you guys been? Well, before we get into this video, if you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you like the show, be sure to hit that subscribe button and tap the bell to get notified of all of my videos. And also, if you don't like to see my ugly face now, you can always listen to the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, iHeartRadio, uh, Radio Public. You know, it's, it's, it's everywhere, child. It's everywhere. And also, be sure to follow me on social media at TDGS Official on Twitter and Instagram. And without further ado, let's get into this show. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm, let me get into this intro because I feel like I have to address some things about certain things that's been going on for the past couple weeks. I tried to give you a pre-show, but I started the internship and whew, we'll explain that later. Um, it's a lot. But anyway, it's it started with these, I'm having job troubles because um, the job that I'm working at and it's supposed to be going in for a shift today at this little retail store, it's just, it's giving me trouble, it's giving me stress, unwanted stress that I don't need. I got things to do, I got a podcast to start, well, to, to revive, and I have an internship to do and now I gotta do work because I need money. But, I don't know, I'm just, I don't feel like I'm being treated right over there, and I feel like it's just like, you know, they're like, I know this isn't for me, and I feel like I should be humble with the, whatever job I have, because, you know, there's a lot of people that are not working and not making any revenue as when they're in college, and I'm, like, lucky to have a job while I'm on campus, hopefully, because child, if they don't email me back, but a job on campus and a job when I get home, so it's just like, you know, I need to stay here. But it's just, it gets stressful because it's like people that work there get on my dang nerves and I'm not gonna name drop nobody. I'm not gonna name drop nobody company because I wanna get sued and I'm not giving nobody no clout. And it's just, I've been going through that and I've been going through a little bit of post uh, depression or whatever. I feel like the depression always kind of happens when I come back home for the summer because I feel like I've been doing so much. I've been, like I'm always working while I'm in school. Like I'm always working on either classwork or stuff for the media club and other clubs that I'm uh, participating in and, and is student leader for. So it is a lot on my plate. But then when I get home, there's really nothing to do but just me sitting here at home. That's why I try to, you know, do the podcast like full force because there really is nothing to do here. I only got a handful of friends that's in my hometown that are still, that I still like that I still talk to. But I mean, it is whatever. And then I started the, the internship, which kind of kickstarted everything and kind of suppressed some of the little bit of depression. It's not really like depression, depression, like I don't want to hurt myself or anything like that, but it's like, it's more or less, you know, I'm the type of person that's always doing something. So if I'm not doing something, I get bored easily. And I think boredom is a form of depression to a certain extent. And I think that's what this is. I don't know, but I'm just, hopefully I'll get over it, child. Because, you know, we have a lot of stuff to talk about, a lot of things to cover. And also the internship, I wanted to talk about that too. The internship was good. I went the first week, the first three days, you know, I go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I tried, like I said, I tried to do a pre-show, but that first Monday, when I went to that internship, I went right to bed and I ain't wake up till eight to get up so, to get something to eat. And I was contemplating because it was something that we're gonna talk about a little bit later that I really wanted to talk about but i was like no i'm too tired and if i don't have the energy then it, the podcast is just not it's not there it's not you know i, I always like i said i want 100 percent energy with every project that i create so i was like let me just wait till thursday record the podcast and then we'll see what happens but yeah the internship was good I'm, it's definitely this one is definitely more hands-on i will say um I'm gonna be doing a lot of audio editing. I'm gonna be sitting in on shows. This, this is stuff that I didn't do with the other internship. You know, we we just sat there, we did mailing, and we did their social media, and we did archives, and maybe we could have edit one person's show. You get what I'm saying? But it never was aired. It was only to be put on uh, streaming services. So it really wasn't like, okay, you need we need this on deadline. This is going on air tomorrow. Like, no, this is how this internship is like. I get, I'll get a show that, or reshow that I have to edit, make to put the promos in it, and then there's all these different type of cues that you have to do. And 
after yesterday, you know, third day of me being on an internship, I got a little bit, I got moderate into what I was doing. I, I was able to do it okay. I'm starting to remember things, but the day one child, I was just like, oh my God, well, I got this guy with like all these different cues. And I've had Windows, and that's what they use. They use Windows um, computers. And I've had it for a long time. And it's so strange how like there's certain things that I'm just now picking up. I'm like, what, we always could have did this? And I'm using Adobe Audition, which is an audio editor, editing system, like uh, Premiere, but this is just for audio. I love it. I I was about to get, I was about to invest in getting Pro Tools, but no, I mean, I like, I like, <laughs> Adobe Audition is a whole lot better. Um, and I'm learning their type of cues and then I'll be able to eventually edit actual radio segments because their radio segments they have some live but most of it is pre-recorded so i'll be going into someone's show taking the audio editing it and giving it to the people so they can post it and i'll also be able to keep it for my own portfolio which is good because you know i you know i, I kind of noticed something i mean like these uh three days i've noticed like I think I'm an editor. Like, I really do feel like I, I could be good in audio editing better than, you know, the commentating thing. But, you know, I, I want to I wanna still be resilient and keep on doing this because I really feel like it will get better. Even though a lot of people say this is a good podcast. I don't know. I don't know. You know, you know, I just, I don't know. I don't like the sound of my voice. But they people like the sound of a good voice. I'm like, mm, I don't know. But we'll see what happens with that. You know, that was that's what happened at the internship. It's going to be fun. Um, It's actually at a college. Is that a community college which there's like other students around and stuff like that so I'll be working with other students too because there's other student interns that's supposed to be interning there so you know it's a good little networking thing meeting people and stuff like that yeah yeah so until I go until I come back to school on in September child it's gonna be a lot but anyway more over to the intro let's talk about the first week of pride if those of you that didn't know this is pride month hello June so a lot of things have conspired. I'm definitely going to Pride this year. Pride NYC actually, the 30th with uh, some friends and a cousin or whatever, whoever wants to show up. <laughs> but all I know is I already bought my outfit, so I'm going regardless whether it is friends with me or not. I'll get on that train and go myself. Um, Cause I've never been to NYC Pride. I've been to Washington Pride, and that was ooh, child. Let me tell you. <laughs> well, to make a long story short, child, when I went to Washington Pride, I went with a couple friends. It ended up being a group. You know, when you' about to go to a vacation or whatever, and it'd be a whole group of people in the group chat saying, "Yeah, we gonna go. Yeah, we gonna go." And when the time come, it's only three of us. That's what it was like with this Washington trip. Now, one person took us to Washington with her car. She ended up bailing on us. So then we had to, there was another friend that was coming up from down south. And it was then another, another you know, three of us again. We went to Pride, the girl got drunk, got mad at the other girl that I was with. And she was like, oh, well, I'm about to leave y'all out here. She was about to literally say, I'm about to leave y'all out here in Washington, DC. Now, mind you, at that time, cause we were sharing Ubers or whatever. Like I put, she put her Uber in, my phone i'd be like let me tell you some little white girl you leave me out here in dc i will take an uber all the way back from dc to pa on your ass because because she told me how much was in her damn bank account let me tell you don't don't you dare get it don't, don't you damn dare get it twisted if you gonna leave me out oh hell nah but things ended up working out because her mom ended up coming up here and they took us home i was like oh my god never again like uh-uh i'm going on trips with people that i know that will not leave me out here in these streets. Uh, um, but I mean, before that situation happened, you know, it just just Washington Pride was just amazing. Like that was my first experience with Pride. There was so many people there. There's so many floats. I mean, there was like drag queens throwing condoms at us and stuff. It was fun. I liked it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed myself before the situation happened. Um, there was people that spoke to you. Like I remember when we first went up and let me tell you, child, when you go in that little metro system in DC and in that big old elevator, you know what I'm talking about. If that thing was not working, cause that thing was not working when I was going and we had to walk up them stairs cause I wasn't waiting in line for no elevator. We had to walk up them stairs. to feel like I was walking up the, the stairs to heaven child. 
it, it, girl, when I got up, everybody was like, hi, happy pride. Like, I was like, mad people that I don't even know, like, mad random people started, like, talking to me and saying hi. I'm like, oh, my God, I like this. Like, this is really a safe haven for um, LGBTQ uh, members, of course. And also, this is, look, straight people, let me tell you something. It is for all people. You hear what I'm saying? It is I, I, I look at it as like a gay-straight alliance because straight people are invited. A lot of straight people don't go because they might be uncomfortable or they feel like, oh, well, this is their thing. No, it's everybody. I mean, it, it could be everybody's thing. You could be proud to be an ally. And yeah, so it's, it's whatever. But, you know, there's always some negativity that arise, child. And I'm just going to insert this here. I was reading, you know, I was on Twitter this weekend and I read this tweet by Bishop Tobin, who is a uh. Catholic bishop. And he comes out and he says that he wants to remind all Catholics not to support or engage in any pride uh, and participate yes. in any pride uh, parades or anything uh, supporting the LGBTQ community because it's against Christian values and that it's harmful to children. And I and I tweeted out that my Catholic children will be attending pride events as this Catholic. God is love and Jesus is love yeah. and, and love is love. Yeah. And, and for a Catholic bishop to come out and say something like that, given the history of pedophilia in the Catholic mm -hmm. Church, given what the Catholic mm -hmm. Church has hidden about the abuse of children, some would say that being at a pride parade would be much safer for a child than it has been to be in a Catholic church for many years. I didn't hear one lie. I mean, at the end of the day, you can have your opinion. You, can, you, you don't have to, you get what I'm saying? I'm not making nobody except what I am, but what you're going to do is respect it. And 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 let's be honest, child. You shouldn't. Y'all don't have no room. That religion has no room to be talking about safety against children or whatever. Because what y'all been doing for years and still in doing it, y'all sitting around here moving all these goddamn priests that are molesting these little boys. Keep moving them to another church. They doing the same thing. Y'all need to get it together. <laughs> Because child, mm -mm. I love, and that's right, Sonny. You better speak it. You better speak on it, Sonny Holson. I love her on the view, by the way. She, mm. I'm surprised Megan McCain wasn't there, child. She probably be like, "Oh well, that's their opinion." Girl, bye. It's anyway. <laughs> let's get into some more news with this pride situation. Okay, so some straight guys from Boston are organizing a straight. Pride event on the 31st of August and using the same route as the Pride in Boston. Um, John Hugo, one of the organizers of the parade, told the Washington Post that he and his fellow organizers feel that they are op they are an oppressed majority. Mm. Oppressed majority. I guess. I, okay. Let me just read the rest of this because I'm like, uh, uh, no, okay. So, um, and then there was another quote where they said, uh, we want tolerance and we want tolerance for everybody and not just the LGBT community. And that's what he said. Now, let me just tell you, let me just, let me just tell you something, buddy. The LGBT community can be and is oppressed at times. I mean, from my understanding, we lost two people to unnecessary violence and bullying and we just had, and no one's up in arms. And let me just let me just mention that nobody is up in arms about it. We just had a couple that was attacked in Vegas. No one's talking about it no more. It was one and done. No one is like thinking about it. I hope that those boys actually got out of their house and moved somewhere to a safe location or whatever. Um, we just lost Malaysia Booker, Nigel Shelby. You get what I'm saying? It sounds like a question to me, but I'm gonna go ahead and ask the question. How many white people have died for a uh, hate crime? Or how many heterosexual people have died for being who they love, being uh, being with who they love or whatever? You don't see it. And my thing is, you know, you know, of course, if you're black, yeah, that's 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 this that's oppression as well. Black being black is oppression. But but this is a white person. These are white people that's organizing this situation. How the hell are y'all oppressed? What do y'all what, what, what are y'all going through? I, I just need to know. I just need to know what are y'all going through? Because uh, y'all living y'all best life. Y'all little Trump is out here being the president. 
all this situation is happening. Look, what y'all pressed about? That's what I want to know. But I, I can't get into it. At the end of the day, like, I'm not going to be pressed about this situation because at the end of the day, you can do what you want. But the fact that you're going the same route and then you're going on August 31st, it's, it's obviously it's mocking pride. It's it's knocking it, like it's mocking the LGBT pride, and you're just trying to make it make light of this of it or whatever, and trying to say that oh well, we're all oppressed out here. Like no bitch, we're oppressed. And pride is not even now. I look the way I look at pride. You you can say what you want in the comments if you want to, but. The way I view pride before, yes, it started out when people were getting shot by cops and, and this was because of police brutality. That's how pride started because there were cops that were literally killing gay people. And then they decided to make a pride and actually do a parade and, and you know, you know, just to, it, it was, it started out as a protest and now it's an event now. Nowadays, it's not because of oppression. You're just celebrating the fact that who you are. It's a safe haven. Haven when people just all all walks of the world just comes in together and we're all nice and, you know, cool and collected. Because at the end of the day, like, yes, there's a lot of gay people in the world. But we're kind of spread out. And, it's, and the ones that are, like, around us, like the gay people that's in my hometown or the people that I've come across or whatever that was that way, you know, it's not that same camaraderie when you go to a pride event. You get what I'm saying? That's that's all I'm going to say. So it's like more of a safe haven. It's not more of, oh my God, we're oppressed and so we need to have this event. It's more of a celebration. That's what it is now. And everyone, let me tell you something. We have our celebration on June. Black uh, history, we got, you know, that that's in February and I'm black too. So I, you get what I'm saying? And Spanish people got their little thing. White people, y'all got the whole year. You got the whole year to celebrate who the hell y'all are. So what y'all pressed about, girl, bye. I mean, whatever. We'll just see how this plays out. I mean, they said that it was going to cancel it, and they tried to stop them, and they had to file a discrimination complaint or whatever. Yeah, sure. Discrimination. Mm -mm. You've been Y'all been discriminating for years. Y'all kill me, child. We can't, like, no one can, nobody, nobody, one culture can't enjoy who they are just for a month or a week or a day without somebody else from another culture being like, oh my God, well, I need to do this. I need to do that. And a lot of people say like, oh, what's the big deal of this? What's the big deal of this situation? It's just like when we was coming out with Black Lives Matter and that was the big thing. Now it's cliche now because people are saying, oh, well, white lives matter, all lives matter or some shit like that or blue lives matter. Like now everyone is using their own type of lives matter, which no, honey, you should have kept the same, so now we're just going to give it to you. <laughs> Girl, mm-mm. I mean, we'll just see what happens. Like I said, we'll see what happens. This, this is a lot. But anyway, let's get into these hot topics, child. We got to get into these hot topics because there's a lot to talk about, child. There's a lot to talk about. Let's talk about when they see us. All right. Let's talk, let's talk about it because I watched it. I want to say this weekend, last weekend, I meant, and it was sad. Let's talk about it. So for those who don't know, the Netflix original docuseries, When They See Us, tells the story of five boys wrongly accused of an attack in sexual assault of a jogger, Trisha Melly. The series exposes the breakdown of the U.S. criminal justice system during the Central Park Five, and that's what they call the boys, the Central Park Five. So basically... Five boys that were out in Central Park were accused of attacking someone, and, and it was it wasn't true. It wasn't them? It wasn't they? The DNA on the woman, the semen that they found, wasn't none of those boys. I mean, it was, and the show will have you upset. Not upset. No, the show will have you mad in the beginning and upset in the end. Because when I tell you the first two episodes was about, you know, the, the, the first episode, however, was about the interrogation and making those boys record themselves, um, exposing themselves, saying that, yeah, I did this. And when they didn't, they were beating them up and, and making them sign things and making their, like the one with the sister made the sister sign something saying that he wrote or whatever. I mean, it, it, it the show pissed me off. You know, and 
This show wasn't meant for the enjoyment, of course, to show black trauma. And it just, it pissed me off. And then towards the end, it showed more of uh, Corey Wise's part when he went to jail because he was the one that got hit the most. And the ironic part is he literally wasn't even in Central. He, he literally wasn't in Central Park. He basically went to the police station to help his friend out to see what was going on with his friend. He stayed there for a long time because the friend wasn't out of his interrogation. And the cops just came in and was like, all right, well, we, we, you a suspect too. Ain't that some shit? Ain't that some shit? No, for real. You just going in to help your friend. You just sitting in the, in the damn police station waiting for him to get out and get out of interrogation. And they book your ass. And now you got to, you know, you got all these charges on you because they end up losing. And the way they lost child. I, I, I want to say that, you know, it could have been avoided. Of course, we all know looking in on the situation, you know, it's easy for us to say it could have been avoided. But it can be avoided now. Because this shit, I do believe this shit is still happening. You know, cops are still, you know, harassing boys into black boys rather into you know saying that they did certain things that they didn't do because this is happening all the time this is what this is the world that we live in child now there was some people that people in the, in the black community that expressed how we shouldn't um film black trauma like or that we do it too much and i agree i agree and disagree because when i tell you when they was doing because back in the back in a couple years ago like it was slave movie, slave movie, slave movie, slave movie, slave movie. You get what I'm saying? Twelve Years of Slavery, The Butler, Django, all that. Like you get what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, we get it, we get it, okay. And yes, I do believe that black trauma is in too many black films. You get what I'm saying? We need to have more films that is more positive. But we do have stuff that's positive. We got She's Got to Have It. We got Black Panther, uh, Insecure. We got we have a lot of shows. I'm not processing them, processing them right now. But we have a lot of shows that don't really express the black trauma. But at the end of the day, you have to tell a story. And Ava DuVernay, let me say something about that director. She knows how to get you there at that point. I don't know what the hell she did with A Wrinkle in Time. I mean, and that's another example because, you know, it was, a, it was a prominent black cast on there. Okay, you know, no black trauma there. Um, I don't know what she did with that movie, though. I don't know. But this show had me in tears at the end. I don't never get you. I only get choked up with one movie and that's Color Purple. Okay? Because that part was like, Nettie. Girl, that was my part. <laughs> anyway, I only get choked up with that movie and now this movie, child. I was getting choked up because when they show Corey Wise's part and, and the shit that he had to go through, because they really, like, the people in there really thought that he did it. So, you know, we always talked about, oh, yeah, he gonna get it when he go to jail. He gonna get it when he go to jail because, you know, he raped someone or whatever. But we never see that. And I would say this is the first time we actually see something like that happen. You get what I'm saying? It, it was, and, and the fact that it's to a person that didn't even do it. That's what makes it even worse. Girl. But I feel like we need to show this type of movie. I'm getting off type of topic. We need to show these types of movies because at the end of the day, it can, it could have been avoided. You know, if those boys wouldn't, uh, they would have took the beating. And I, and that's how I am. I mean, that's just how I am. You know, you can say your opinion about this in the comments, but bitch, if I'm being interrogated and I know I ain't do nothing, beat my ass. Go ahead. Go ahead. Cause I ain't saying nothing. Now you put me on camera. I ain't do it. You get what I'm saying? And if they all would have said that and kept that same energy, they couldn't have kept them there. They would have been there for hours, maybe a couple of days, but they wouldn't, they legally, they couldn't have kept them there. And I feel like you should show this to, to, to young boys and black men also because, you know, we don't know. The law is that they can't do that. They can't stay longer than that, especially if they're minors. It's their parents should be there. So obviously if they would have if they would have kept that same, you know, story, the mothers would have came out the woodwork like, okay, where my child at? The mothers either the mothers would have came or they would have been like, Okay, we gotta take them home because we can't keep we cannot keep them here. It was impossible and in, in, in some points they felt like they were going to die and they felt like, you know, the cops was going to kill them. So, yeah, of course, you can't really say, oh, well, that's why I kind of agree and disagree. 
of showing this to people, showing, you know, letting this be shown. I don't want no other show like this to come out in the future because I'm be like, okay, now we're doing too much. Okay. We're doing too goddamn much with this black drama. But I feel like it was right for this moment right now. And I feel like it should be shown. I mean, and something that my best friend told me, you know, it's a variety. Like, there's a variety of black films. You got the black trauma and you got the, 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 um, the regular films, which is like romantic films. I mean, look on Netflix, child. There is a lot of them. Go ahead and look. Now, if you don't, if you have, are you, if you're emotional, I wouldn't suggest you watch this movie. And it's not for everybody. I will say this. It's not for everybody. I mean, I watched it because my parents actually was watching it. I didn't even know about this. But I probably would have ended up watching it anyway because everybody was talking about it. Um, it starts, it's a conversation starter and a conversation that we need to have. And I'm glad that those men got, um, got paid at the end. Y'all messed up, y'all messed up their life. That is, ugh, I, I couldn't imagine. I mean, it just left me, the, the whole show just left me like angry, sad, and then, oh, okay, well, they got, they got paid in the end. But at the end of the day, like, what did they cost? Like their entire life. Half of them, and my thing is, it made me look at New York differently. I'm like, mm. And I used to want to go to Central Park because, you know, you know, that's what you do when you go to New York and you're a tourist. Like, you go to Central Park. But I'm like, uh-uh, child. I don't want to be caught up, child. I don't know. Especially not at night. It is unsafe to be a black person in Central Park at night. And I'm, I'm still keeping that. I'm looking at New York a little different. But I did some research and they said that, the, that New York in the 80s was very divided, very... Um, a lot of discrimination between um, whites and undesirables. You get what I'm saying? And when I say undesirables, I mean like black people, gay people, this, that, and the third. We've seen that in polls because polls is in the 80s and that's when AIDS broke out and everything. And it was some discrimination against those people, uh, against people like that. So I feel like, mm, yeah. And, and that's so crazy because I always told myself, I was like, oh my God, I should have been born in the 80s. I should have been born in the 80s. I'm like, oh, looking back, I'm like, well, like, they had good music, but everybody wasn't shit back then. <laughs> so no, I'm glad I'm in this time. <laughs> I mean, I tell you, it, it really, it was such a, like, oh God. And it was very gruesome and just, Ava DuVernay, girl, you, 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 did your, you did your thing. And then let me tell you about this God dang prosecutor now now she's her her um she's losing she lost her rights to to be a lawyer i guess or whatever i don't know how you call that and she also tried to tell ava to be like okay take out this part take out that part she was probably like i'm, I'm she's like uh honey you signed the contract and i'm putting whatever i'm putting out on there because that's what you did i'm trying to make <laughs> trying to make yourself look you're getting paid for it it's not like she's not getting paid for it so Use that little coin. They're going to hate you for the rest of your life. And just stay in hiding. Now, for that Linden bitch, that, that damn detective. Oh, uh-uh. They need to run me her books. Take them books off the shelf. Take them goddamn books off the shelf. She is a bad detective. That day. Girl. And she got an Instagram child. But don't, but don't go on it, child. The, the comments are disabled, so you can't really see them. But you can't give her a direct message, though. <laughs> um... Yeah, I, those people in that movie just made me so angry because it was just like, ugh, I cannot believe we really are we doing this, but it was back in the day, so that is expected of people and how they think and stuff like that. It was just a lot. I couldn't. Yeah, it was. It was Lord Jesus. But anyway, that's with that movie. Let's go into more newsy like stuff. Not newsy, but like more like celebrity entertainment news y'all heard about young miami okay so it all started when asian doll i'm not calling her asian the she's asian doll girl i cannot stand when y'all rappers want to change y'all names asian doll tweeted we be writing our own ish and she also tagged megan the stallion now if you, those who don't know megan the stallion and uh, asian doll they are good they're cool with each other they performed i believe at the hot 97 event or whatever so they're cool. Um, but Meg decided I don't want no parts of this shot. She's like, uh-uh, leave me. My name Bennett, I ain't in it. <laughs> I'm not with that drama. But anyway, the tweet said we be writing our own ish. And that's, you know, she's clearly saying that, hey, I write my own stuff. You get what I'm saying? Like, there's no writer for me. But then it caused Young Miami to make a post. 
Um, and the picture said, a hit is a hit. Some of y'all hoes need a writer or whatever. You know, kind of in response to Asian Doll. Whatever. I mean, it's, I mean, obviously you took offense to it. It's like, it's like one of those things where you throw something out there and then someone gets offended. I'm like, okay, I'm not even talking about you, but being that you're getting offended and you're coming at me, then I'm talking about you. Then, then you, you must feel, off you're offended by it and it must be true that, you know, you don't write your own stuff. Like, come on now. Ain't nobody was talking about you. Ain't nobody say, at Young Miami, honey, I be writing my own ish. Like, now that would have been bad, but no. She literally just said, I write my own ish. What's wrong with saying you write your own stuff? So if I say, I make my own content, I write my own content, because you know there's other YouTubers, other uh, podcasters, talk show hosts, whatever, that have writers. I write my own shit, and that's true. So is other YouTubers and other commentators going to come at me like, oh, well, it don't matter. Some, sometimes you need to write that. No. There's people that write their content and there's people that don't. Just like there's people that write their raps and people that don't. Personally, I think there's a room there's room for both. Um, because at the end of the day, Act Up is a good song. And, you know, there's a lot of good songs on Meg Thee Stallion's al uh, album that she just came out. She writes her own raps. Asian Doll, I'm not, I, can't, I can't really get into the Asian Doll like that. I'm not really a fan of hers. But, you know, I'm pretty sure she got some good music on there. And she writes... And there's some shit on Cardi's. I mean, and speaking of Cardi, child, mm -mm. to make matters worse, this is what Cardi had to say. If he wrote it or not, the fuck? I bet you motherfucking listen to it. I bet you rap that whole fucking song with your whole motherfucking heart, bitch. I bet every single motherfucking time your nigga fucked up, you be on some real ass bitch. Give a fuck about a nigga with the accent. I bet y'all do it with the accent. I bet y'all put the accent. Same group of bitches that are ass to the picture. I bet y'all use... They accent though. You're not using little Yachty accent. You're using they accent. The fuck? Y'all be singing that song with your whole fucking chest. Y'all bitches be fucking hating. Same bitches that be popping shit in the comments sing that song with their whole fucking heart. I bet as soon as the motherfucking weather got hot, Y'all bitches put y'all fucking booty shorts on. Talk about it's that season when niggas spend a check for no reason. But no niggas are spending the check on y'all. So stop it. Y'all bitches not what y'all not gonna do, y'all not gonna hate on a bitch. Fuck out of here. Never. I feel like this is like overkill now. I mean, yeah, obviously she has a point that, you know, we still bump into act up even if she wrote it or not. And that's true. Um at the end of the day, Asian Doll didn't say no names. She didn't even like, cause there's a, there's, I mean, if anything, it could, she could have been talking about these dudes. Cause honey, these dudes don't be writing nothing either. Come on, Drake. And oh, and oh, and oh. <laughs> y'all already, y'all know he got a ghost right. Anyway. Yeah. Like it is, it, I, I don't understand where that's coming from. Obviously you sound mad when you sit there and like try to address everything. And then Cardi coming in out of nowhere. I'm like, girl, girl, it, I guess she was talking about the fans cause she wasn't talking about Asian doll. A lot of people said that she was talking about Asian doll. She didn't mention her at all. Um, oh, that rhymed. She didn't mention her at all. And it was just, I don't know, it just didn't seem right to me. I, I was like, girl, like, you always have to address things in live. Like, shut up and rap. That, that's ugh, that's just my issue with her. But it's not about Cardi. It's about, you know, Miami and Asian Doll. Like I said before, there's room for both. And cut this petty bull crap. I mean, that was just dumb. I don't know, I feel like these rappers really just make little, little beefs just to, you know, stay in the limelight. Because I know that we're going to talk about them. And, and I try not to talk about them too much because I don't want to make my show a commentary of female rap. You get what I'm saying? Like, this is just a commentary for celebrity gossip. If y'all do some dumb stuff, I'm going to talk about it. Um, there hasn't been a lot that's going on, so I had to find something to talk about, and this was the perfect thing. Um, yeah. Get over yourselves, child. But anyway, let's move on. And let me just say how I've tried. I have tried to ignore this topic time and time again. And it just keeps popping up. You know what it is. It's the never ending story of the Jesse Smollett attack, child. The never ending story. Okay. So 
Now there's uh, 911 calls that are being released, and listen to this. I just see the police to come by. Um, I work for an artist. I, I, I don't really want to say his name, but he stayed here. He, was, he went to subway. He was walking by, and some guys, I don't know, they jumped him or something like that. And I just want to report it and make sure he's all right. Okay, so we just checking the well-being. Okay, so... Yeah. Is this upper or lower? Huh? Okay. It's, 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 I'm, I'm in... I'm waiting in the lobby. I'm going to go back up to the apartment. Okay, so you're going back to the apartment. So you're just going to leave yeah. them there? Yeah, I, I came down because I didn't realize the, the, the address. I, I didn't realize the address, and, you know, he was cool. He didn't want me to call you guys, but I felt like you need to make a report. <laughs> okay, so did, okay, you can't make the report for him. Did he want to? Sounds like a lot of hoopla. Y'all know about, y'all know about that reference. <laughs> but, I mean, it just does not sound believable. This is a worker of his, of Jesse Smullett's, and... First of all, the man is trying, like, in the call, he said he's going to walk away, like, he's like he's going to go back now, I'm like, and then the uh, person was like, you're just going to leave him there? Girl, that, that's your boss, right? That's your boss. So if that's your boss, you're going to make sure he is okay, because when you, you see your ass leave, your ass is fired. You get what I'm saying? It looked very, it sounded very staged. It didn't sound authentic. Um, he was probably put up on onto it, and he did not want no parts of it, and it sound, it, hmm. You know when you try to make somebody call somebody, and then you just sound all well. Uh, uh, what do you want me to say? Like, come on now, it's looking bad on him, and that's just another reason why I think this is gonna this case might be reopened and he might really get to blame it. But you know, Lee Daniels just came out and said that he will be in no parts of Empire next season, the last season. Well. He's going to always, I guess they're going to make it like he's always in another country. And they'll call him, but he won't ever come back. <laughs> It'll be the last season. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I feel like, I don't mind him being on the last season. I wouldn't have mind him. I mean, I, it just, you know, you shouldn't do what you did, I guess. But, uh, well, now you, you blackballed yourself, child. Don't lie. But anyway, let's move on. I want to shout out to Rihanna. She now has a network of 600 million, making her the richest female artist over Taylor, over Beyonce, over all them hoes. <laughs> Let me say over all them women. Um, you better sell that Fenty Beauty. Let me just, uh, can we talk for real? You better sell that goddamn makeup kit. Because it wasn't the music, it wasn't the music. Come on, let's be honest, let's be honest, let's be honest. She hasn't come out with an album in a couple years, and she did a little, a little, a little bit of, a couple of uh, features or whatever. Girl, I ain't doing nothing. But that Fenty Beauty is hitting. And shout out to Rihanna, and also Jay-Z for being the first rapper to be a billionaire. You know, a lot of these rappers talk about it, but Andy, but none of these rappers is really a billionaire. I don't know. This week was a little dry, though. You know, not really much to talk about. Not really, not a lot of celebrities doing dumb things. Uh, but I'm pretty sure something is going to come out later today, Thursday. And I've already done post damn podcast tomorrow. But whatever. We just going to see what, we, we gonna see what happens. Um, yeah, this is a dry week. So hopefully things pick up. I didn't have a lot of topics to talk about. I don't know how long this podcast is because I have to stop the video to see how long it was. Hoping it's at least 30 something. I was shooting for 30. <laughs> but whatever I get, this is what it is. And until next time, I'm yours, Darren Green, and this is The Darren Green Show. Signing out. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Like I said before, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. And if you like the show, hit that subscribe button and tap the bell to get notified of all of my videos. And also check out TDGS Official on Instagram. Child, it be getting lit on that page. All right, guys. See you later.